what the fuck you say? Vietnamese guy. Yeah. I said, what the fuck you looking at? You know, walks over. And then uh, he gets in my face, so I get up. Uh -huh. And then um, his other homies who came with him, they stand behind uh, the friends that I'm with. My Now, the friends that I'm with have their back turned to them. Oh, shit. They're standing behind them. I see these fools pull out shanks and then put it under their shirt like this. So this guy who's coming up to here to me is sitting here fucking just talking shit to my face, right? <laughs> today, today's the night, tonight's dude. Tonight's the night. Tonight's the fucking night. In five, four, three, two, one. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Genius Brain Podcast. Uh, we have a very, very special and regular guest. We got Edry back in the house. <laughs> <laughs> Over here, today is my last day eating unhealthy food. Actually, last day out of this week. Because your boy week. is yeah. getting that six pack this exactly. year. It's going to happen. This fool was fucking <laughs> laughing at me earlier. He's heard it many, I've many heard times. I've heard that line. No, me for 10 so years. So verbatim. Sick, I'm going to get a six pack this year. It's going to happen. <laughs> I feel it, dude. I feel it. I feel it so good this year, man. It's going to happen, man. Well, you know, the six pack exists somewhere there. You just, dude, have, to, so you just have to bring it to the dude, surface. You laugh now, dude. All these fucking ladies, they be like, damn, David's funny. And he's funny. <laughs> It. Nah, the, the funny factor is gonna go down. Nah, <laughs> dog. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be uh, who's who's a buff funny guy. Mm. Well, I mean, I guess Kevin Hart's pretty fit. You know, he's a he's, uh, a, he's funny. Yeah, Dave Chappelle got buff for a second. Yeah, but he he you see he didn't get like like toned. He just got swole, so he's still like big. You know, I'm just gonna wear baggy shirts. <laughs> but your boy about to have a six pack, dude. Makes the coach bigger, dude. For my fans <laughs> out there who don't know what coach is, coach is penis in big crib. This dude said, hey, uh, whatever you want to eat tonight after we're done with this, <laughs> let me know because I got to the end of the week. <laughs> I'm eating whatever I can. So what you guys don't know, if, you, if you're watching this on the video, I have a knee sleeve on right now because <laughs> I thought that I was Michael Jordan. And I found one basketball court in L.A. that was open. And I decided to do a layup. And then I exploded my knee. <laughs> So God doesn't want me skinny. Trying to do a layup. And then my knee is exploded. But other than that, I feel fantastic, dude. It's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen in my life when I have a six-pack. I think it's going to change things, dude. I'm well, I mean, the good thing is you're not really going to need your legs. You know? <laughs> hey, man. I'm just, it's hard weight training, though, man. It is. Weight training is sure. so fucked. I don't understand how people weight train consistently all yeah. the time and what kind of motivates them. I really got to get a bodybuilder in here because I need to understand what their mind state is about it. You know, the thing is, I feel like there's different levels of how much people enjoy food. You know, some people yeah. can just like kind of turn off their brain and just eat, you know, chicken breast and fucking uh, broccoli and, you know, whatever. Every single day. Cereal killers. Yeah, meal prep. And then they eat the same shit seven days a week. But then there are others who are like, you know what? I fucking enjoy food. I like things touching my tongue <laughs> and me feeling a sensation from it, you know? Now, there's some weird, like I always tell people there's this, this chart of fitness yeah. and like enjoyableness, right? Yeah. So sometimes I think when people say, first of all, okay, let's, I'll get a six pack. Mm. I'll, get, I'll get like one of those, the things that you see, you know, when the light changes, <laughs> yeah. you might see yeah, something. Yeah, just a little bit of definition. Yeah, just a little definition. I don't want a six pack because when you, when you look a certain way, there's a certain amount of things you have to give up. There's mm. like a good fine balance. Yeah. It's like, who, which, which person do you want to be? Do you want to be the person with the six pack that has to have a very specific diet to try to keep that year round mm. or do you want to be the person that's just you know relatively fit but yeah. still eats generally what he wants and just moderates his food, right 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 you know yeah so i don't know where i want to be i just know that i just want a six pack once <laughs> i want to see it change my life you've never had a six pack before never, never. in my fucking Two life pack, dude. four pack never never <laughs> i don't know what an ab is i've never had an ab. i never had just, abs once just one surface just area. one hard solid mass <laughs> never in my life have i ever had uh six packs or like crazy pecs but what mm. i did have though i used to have ripped fucking quads mm. because i used to love uh leg workouts okay it was like my shit because yeah, i wanted yeah. to dunk yeah so i used to just squat <laughs> all the fucking time just squats front squats <laughs> uh lunges whatever you yeah. can name like yeah. fucking jump squats whatever and, yeah. you know, it wasn't very scientific but uh. the only thing that i made super ripped were my fucking quads like i like i had i don't want to say i had striations but I had like quad separation and everything. I remember yeah. just looking at my yeah. legs. I was like, what the fuck yeah. is this? That's probably why you, you fucked up your knee. Nah, I know for sure. I didn't know what I was doing. But my legs have been relatively strong back in the day. But uh -huh. ever since then, I just stopped weight training because it just, it's not fun. Yeah, yeah. I don't like it. It doesn't make, it doesn't, I don't know. It doesn't make me happy. No, for sure. I mean, look, man, 
like I said, there's variations on like how people look at food and what it means to them. Like, even though I don't eat a lot, I, I love food. You know, I, yeah. I love trying he new shit. He doesn't eat shit. <laughs> <laughs> but, but context, guys, context. I have acid reflux. So I, I can't, I can't eat <clears throat> basically to the point where I'm full. My doctor advised me when I first got diagnosed with it, like, just eat until you're satiated, basically. So I, I, that's where I keep it at. And it's, it's like, you know, it works out. Like I, I, I get to still eat the foods that I like to eat, but I just have to practice moderation. <laughs> <laughs> you, don't, you don't fucking eat anything, dude. You literally don't eat anything. And not only does he not eat anything, if you go, this one doesn't give a fuck about the environment. He uses 36 napkins every time he fucking eats. It's the most obnoxious thing I've ever seen in my life. I know, but, but we went over this. There's 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 a method to the madness there. There's no not... fucking method to the madness. You know? It's like, you know, if you use one side of the napkin, you're not going to wipe your mouth again with the dirty side. You got to flip it over and then... You're done with it. But there's then, so much surface area to a napkin besides that one spot. I know, I know, I know. But it's just, it's like an OCD thing on top of it, you know? Oh God, like man. once I once I start to feel like, all right, I, I give you an example. So like, let's say I'm eating something really greasy with my hands, right? Yeah. You know, if you wipe your hands, it's going to get greasy again because you're going to pick it up to eat it. Still knowing that, I mean like the, the sensible or normal person would just eat Continue eating and then wipe, wipe at the end. Yeah. But I got to keep wiping because just that feeling that I have on my fingers or my hands is is like is disgusting to me. Just you eat know? with the fucking knife and fork, man. Don't even, <laughs> don't even pick up shit, dude. Just eat with the fucking just, knife and fork. I got to carry a set around with me all the time. Just, just, just fucking do around. that shit like they do in those fancy restaurants. Just yeah. eat a hamburger with a knife and it's fork. Like, are you eating a pizza with a knife and fork? That's yep. fucking ridiculous, man. <laughs> dude, so... One of our podcasts recently, I was telling him that uh, we had our buddy Pat talk about uh, some of his old like fight stories when he was younger, mm -hmm. dude. Y'all don't know a fucking fight story until you hear about this fool's fucking high school stories. And the crazy <laughs> thing is, right, you know when somebody sometimes tells you stories like you don't really get to hear the 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 other side of what other people got to experience as well. Mm. So we we had a guest on here before. Her name is Megan. So Megan Mitchell, Khalif, and uh Ed actually all went to the same fucking high school <laughs> and they all had the same fucking story. And it's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard in my fucking life. There's a story that this fool told. I mean, you got to tell the story. Dude. It's, mm. it's fucking nuts. Just just because of how violent this school is. Like, it's it's unreal how And I, I was told by uh, Bart actually at mm -hmm. that time. Mm -hmm. So Bart went to his parents moved him to the OC area, yeah. I believe, for him to go to school there. But lo and behold, they didn't know when they assumed that it was like a really nice area. Yeah, yeah. That during that time, yeah. it was ridden with a bunch of gangs. Yeah. So I, I mean I think I, I know what a junior high Bart went to for okay. a little bit. Yeah. Um that's still not Orange County though. It's oh, okay. it's still borderline LA County. Mm -hmm. Um but yeah, at that time at that school, um well, I mean, shit, man, just around the whole area, you know, like, I mean, it was the 90s, like gang culture was so popular, you yeah. know, like gang culture is kind of like what, what would you even compare to right now? Like what, TikTok. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, Being an influencer, yeah. you know, like that gang, gangsters were the influencers of that time. Yeah. So everybody kind of looked to like gangs and gangster music and, and kind of, you know, uh, were, were influenced by that. So you know, at that time, um, there was, I would say, like, maybe about three or four classes. Yeah. Uh, and what I mean by classes is like, let's say if you're in seventh grade, like eighth grade, ninth grade, 10th grade, like there was maybe about four classes where there were just a bad group of, of people. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it kind of trickled down from like the older people too. Um, so... You know, it was uh, it wasn't exactly the most friendliest of environments for sure. Um, and then it was like, if you're on the wrong end of that, life would be pretty miserable for you. You yeah. know, on a daily basis. Uh, so it was just like a constant thing of like, you have to one not be a punk. Like mm -hmm. if if somebody is is kind of trying to check you or like you know trying to do something. I mean, the biggest thing like. 
the most common thing was like it was called taxing. I don't know if you, if you guys had that uh, that term uh, up in up in Sa- uh, Sacramento. Would you just steal people's fucking lunch money and shit? Well, yeah, basically that's that's what t- people would do. They would tax people, right? Yeah, <laughs> terrible people. Yeah, dude. yeah, and then, so like, you know, if they thought you were a punk, you get taxed, right? Yeah. And like most of the time, the people who were getting taxed were kind of too scared or like too soft to do anything. But then if you weren't kind of in that group of the ones getting taxed, you were the uh, the taxer, not the taxi. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you were the IRS pretty much, <laughs> you know? Um, within that group of people, there was always kind of like testing. You know what I mean? Like yeah. sizing each other up. And, and then like rival schools too, uh, people from different schools. Like it would be kind of like a, a school thing where it's like, now nah, we, we could bomb on your school or, you know, they could bomb on. And then it becomes a thing. Like all of a sudden there's beef now. Right. Yeah. So it was just, I don't know, man, like the dynamic of, of like that whole situation was, was just really weird. And well, that checking thing was so, was so interesting. It's like, I remember just, uh, just kind of like some of like the older youngs, right. Mm-hmm. They would, they would <laughs> have this habit of, looking at people who would just walk by mm. and immediately no matter who it fucking is yeah they would just size them up like if we if we were to throw down right now yeah. could i fuck this person up yeah and it could just be some regular dude just walking you yeah know? no for sure for sure that that's what it was <laughs> yeah. man i mean it that you know it, it would it's called dogging right yeah. like you would dog people to see like all right what are they about you yeah. know um and then you bring kind of like the gangs into it. And then it's like not just dogging now. You, you're claiming shit, yeah. right? Like you, you go, you, you're trying to bang on people pretty much. Yeah. So, you know, there were like very like extreme uh, variations of like how seriously people took it. Mm-hmm. Some people were just trying to pose. Some people were like all about it, you know? And, and it's like, it's kind of funny because, you know, generally that area might have been a suburban community, but... When you see kind of like the profile of these people who are gravitating towards that type of lifestyle, right, and behavior, a lot of them came from, you know, not the best homes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, you know, there was family trouble. Maybe it's a single parent home. Mm. Uh, Financial struggles. Uh, Their parents just don't give a fuck about the kid, right? Whatever the case may be, there was some sense of like brokenness within like the family unit. Yeah. And then you could see like those are the type who all kind of gravitated towards each other. Yeah. Right. And, and then it became like a group. Um, so with that context, the the story that you're referencing. There's like 30 of them too, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's, there's a whole lot to really get into about that. But the story in particular that you're referencing. So what had happened was... Um, uh, I got into a fight with somebody and then, um, you know, shit went down. And then uh, this one dude who wasn't exactly the biggest of guys either, um, he just started talking shit, started kind of like popping off like, oh, you know, uh, that that shit was like weak, like y'all motherfuckers ain't shit. Everyone just kind of stopped like, who the fuck is this dude? Nobody knew who the fuck this dude was, right? And then everybody's just kind of asking each other, like, you know who this dude is, right? Did he? Well, so he was in your guys' class, though. No, he wasn't. He wasn't. He was uh, two years older than us. I oh, think shit. two or three years older than us. Okay. Yeah. So we're we're just kind of like, who the fuck is this dude, right? But uh, one of my homies in particular really got it, got into it with him, and I think it's because my homie's also kind of on the shorter side, and he was also on the shorter side, so maybe he was looking for like, you know. Who we thought might be the easiest target. Yeah. And then so they got into it. Um, and I didn't really think anything about it beyond that, right? But then the next Wait, this dude was just saying talking shit out yeah, of nowhere. Just, just talking shit. Basically just talking shit. He was just going around. I, I think he was just trying to like flex, you know? He was because because I guess well, I mean, I found out after the fact, but he was new to the school mm. and and he was coming That's from right, yeah. a, a different school. And so he kind of probably had the mentality like a lot of the dudes here ain't shit, you know? Oh, because I, of like where he's from is a lot yeah, tougher. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And and then he's going to let us know like who he is and, and where he's from, that type of shit, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
But the thing is, is like, I don't, <laughs> like he thought he was in prison. He was like, when I go in, I <laughs> yeah. gotta find the biggest motherfucker yeah, exactly. and take their lunch and see what. Happens. It was highly unnecessary, yeah. you know. So obviously, like all of me and my friends take take offense to it immediately. Like, who the fuck is this dude? Right? Yeah. Like, this dude's popping off. And then it's like, you know, you're willing to even give him the benefit of the doubt if it's like somebody else's man. Like, hey, yeah, yeah, <laughs> you, yeah. you need to check your man right now, yeah. you know. But nobody knew who the fuck he was. So, like, that that made it even more of kind of like a question mark, uh, like a mystery. Like, who is this cat? And then we found out. You know, we, we talked to some of, like, you know, the 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 guys in the in his class. And they're mm. like, oh, yeah, you know, he just came over from this school. So, so it's like, what, who the fuck does he think he is? You know, coming over here, like, saying shit like that. And then, so I didn't really think much of it. It just irritated me. But then it was more like, if this dude pops off again, then he's getting jumped pretty yeah. much. This podcast is brought to you by me, Undies. Have you ever looked at a pair of your underwear and wondered why you chose to have this shred of sandpaper cover your delicates? You're asking yourself these questions because you don't own a wonderful pair of me undies. The crap you have on now is hideous and you should be ashamed of yourself. Well, no more. Because you're better than that, my friends. You are better than that. Listen, bottom line, when it comes to your underwear, it has to be comfortable. I don't care. And I love me undies. They look dope, but best of all, it feels amazing. It's one of the only few boxers that I own that feels softer and softer every time I wash it. And you don't realize how dope it is to have a comfortable pair of boxers till you find the right one. And I found it. So I usually sleep butt naked, but these are kind of so comfortable. I feel butt naked without being butt naked. So to get 15% off your first order, free shipping, a 100% satisfaction guarantee, go to meundies.com slash brain. Once again, that's meundies.com slash brain. You know, but then the next day, um, yeah, uh, the guy, the homie I'm talking about that, that got into it with that dude. All right. So, so to, for the sake of uh, making it easier to understand, I give fictitious names, okay. you know, my homie will call him um, James, okay. and then this dude will call him uh, Nick. Okay. James and Nick, <laughs> okay. right? Um, so, you know, my homie James uh, got into it with this dude Nick the next day again. And uh, I, I saw this shit happen. So I went over to, to my homie James immediately, and then I was I just kind of, you know, ca- try to calm him down. Yeah. And I was like, hey, just, just chill. Like... We'll get him, but you know? What, wait, what did he do? So the dude threw a book. Okay. Nick threw a book at James. That's right, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 He threw a book at him and he was popping off, yeah. you know? I, I don't know what led to that. Uh, all I know is up to that point. And then so I was trying to tell James, like, it hey, just calm down, you know? Like, we'll get him, right? Mm-hmm. But he didn't respond to me. I've never seen a look of like, fury in, in his <laughs> eyes before yeah. like that this dude was like i'm gonna fucking kill this dude from like just looking at him i was like oh shit yeah <laughs> you know this, shit, this shit's going down right so that was like in between the periods and then so that dude nick he, he went off he went into class right and then so i was like all right you know what as soon as this this period's over like like james he he He's 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 on one right now. You know, he's, <laughs> yeah. he's not going to wait, you know? Yeah. So I was just like kind of amped up and I was just waiting, waiting. I was like, come on, come on, come on. Like uh, waiting for the class to end. As soon as like the bell hit, I just fucking threw my backpack, ran into the hallway. And I'm looking for these dudes. I'm like, all right, where they at? Where they at? And then like everybody starts coming out of their classes in the hallway. And then like Moses parting the Red Sea, man, the, the crowd just starts splitting open like this. Mm-hmm. And then it's uh, my homie, uh, James, and then two other homies, uh, one of which was, he was like fucking six feet, you know, 190 pounds yeah. in eighth grade. Yeah. <laughs> it's a big fucking dude, right? Yeah. They're rushing this dude, Nick. Um, and like, there was like no time to even really react to what was happening. You just saw the crowd starting to split open and then these dudes rushing him. And I was like, how the fuck did they even like coordinate this? They could sense anger. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess so, man. Um, and then, yeah, basically uh, the big dude like he, he, he like shoved him into the locker. They were basically like rushing him and the dude was like trying to back up, you know. Mm-hmm. 
The big dude shoved into the locker and then like his fucking head bounced off of it. And these are metal lockers, mind you, right? Yeah. And when a dude that big is pushing a guy that size into it, like he's hitting it with force. Yeah. So he fucking bounces off of it. And then when his head comes back forward, he fucking throws a punch at him and then his head hits it again. And then he fucking falls and then he just starts getting stomped out, you know? And um, my homie uh, James too, like even though he's a small dude, he was built like fucking Derek Fisher. Like, he's a Just small stacked. dude, but he's fucking ripped. Yeah. Like, even at that age, he was six-pack, like, fucking yeah. veins in his arms, right? Yeah. He didn't even work out. He's just naturally blessed like that, yeah. you know? Um, an athletic guy, too, but yeah. And so, like, he's he's fucking strong. Like, you can't underestimate. Like, you might think, oh, because he's short, he's, he's he might be. No, nah, dude's fucking strong. So, his this dude is wearing, like, fucking Tim's, you know? And, and he's like stomping out on this dude. Um, and long story short, man, it, ga- it became pretty chaotic. I mean, they they fucked that dude up. I didn't even really have a chance to jump in because yeah. I was just like, it, it, it was happening so, so quickly all at once. And then like faculty started coming out and then like, you know, they started tackling everybody trying to stop it. And then by by the end of it, the dude was just, man, he was just fucking bleeding everywhere. You know, he was just dripping blood from his face. I'm sure he had like some broken rib. Like he got fucked up. Dude. That's fucking nuts. He went, all right. When he was on all fours, right? The homie James fucking kicked him like full force up like this into his gut. So imagine being on, on all fours, you know, you're like trying to catch your breath because you, you got punched and kicked or whatever. And then somebody's kicking you full and, and then it makes him lifts off the ground, right? Oh shit. So I was like, that's what I'm saying. I'm pretty sure he had broken ribs and you know had some like internal damage, but he got pretty fucked up. Well what the, what the fuck was he thinking? What what did he think was gonna happen? Like, I don't know. I don't it know. It was what, just him. I thought I, I thought like when he did that he probably had like a group of people with him. No, no, no. So but here's the thing. Here's the thing is that you know we obviously um kind of checked like who he knew you yeah. know what i mean like if, if like, he oh, like, don't know nobody yeah, yeah. It, it, and the thing is like where he was from the school he was from like dude we our homies were from there you yeah. know what i mean like um so nobody knew who the fuck this dude was so we're like i fucked this fool <laughs> you know? like, yeah, yeah, yeah who the fuck this guy think he is that's hella random yeah so you know he got he got he got his and then um afterwards like when it kind of had calmed down I was like, you know what, man? There's no point even me jumping in. Like, this, this dude's pretty fucked up. Mm. But then some of my other homies decided to still jump in at that point and, and give him a last few kicks just for good measure to let him know. That's fucking- that, like, dude, at that point, it was that was not super necessary. That was super unnecessary, you know? Um, and then uh that that kind of started a whole wave of like everybody getting kicked out of the school. Yeah. And like the administration was looking for any excuse to get rid of us anyway. Yeah. And that gave them the perfect reason. Right. Mm-hmm. So everybody got kicked out. They got sent to different schools cause they didn't want them to be together. Um, and that, that ultimately for me was like a really big turning point. Cause yeah. like, you know, here were the guys that I was hanging out with all the time. And then most of them are gone now. And I'm I'm pretty much on the verge of getting kicked out too. So they they created like some some stupid policy just just for like a handful of us, what they would consider like the bad seeds that are left. Basically, it, it, what it said was if we do anything wrong from now until we graduate, we're kicked out. Oh shit! Detention, you're kicked out. You get kicked out of class, you're kicked out. A teacher complains about you, you're kicked out. So it's pretty much like yeah. there's no at that point. I'm like. 13, 14 years old. Yeah. There's no way I'm going, yeah. you know? So I, even at that point, I told my parents like, hey, listen, you know, I'm on this, on what they call the behavior contract. I was like, I'm on this thing. There's no way. There's no fucking way. So I might as well just uh, save myself the trouble and just bounce now. Yeah. And my parents are like, there's no fucking way. We're <laughs> yeah. going to we're gonna sign off on you going, because all the other schools were, were worse, you okay. know? So, um. They're just like, if you get kicked out, you get kicked out. You're not going out like on your own decision, yeah. you know? And 
like I said, dude, that ultimately was kind of like my turning point, my saving grace. I mean, I didn't get better immediately. You yeah. know, there was kind of like a, a transitional process. And uh, the crazy shit is, man, I went from being like one of the most hated students probably by faculty mm -hmm. on, on at school at, by the time I was graduating, like one of the most loved. You know? <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> cause everybody saw like where I was and mm. like kind of the transition I was trying to make, you know? Yeah. And so they gave me a lot of leeway with shit, bro. A lot of leeway. Um, I won't say certain things in terms of the leeway that I was given because I don't want to get certain faculty in trouble. But yeah. when I say I was given a lot of leeway, I was able to get away with stuff that you normally would not be well, able they're to. They're probably just like, uh, he's better than what he was before. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So they're trying to help me out, you yeah. know? And, and like my uh, my counselor, she was the one who really had my back. Mm -hmm. Like there were so many counselors before her who basically were like super dismissive and like talk down to me and basically say, you know, not in not so many words that I'm a piece of shit, you know? Yeah. Um, but this one counselor, when she took over our class, like for some reason, man, she, she just would not, she made it a point to not give up. You yeah. know, she's like, no matter what you're going to graduate and I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure that happens. So I've always been super thankful to her and, and I, I've expressed that to her. Um, like, you know, I still talk with her once in a while just to like, uh, she's, she's in another state now, but just to, you know, uh, show her my gratitude, yeah. let her know, like, it's something that I think about because it's so weird because like I remember high school. Like high school, I always hung out with like the the, the nicer kids, mm -hmm, you know. Mm -hmm. But I think I felt all all the people that were bad influences in my life, they mm -hmm. were well, they didn't last in school. So yeah, you know, after school, I would go hang hang out yeah, with them. Yeah, and it was so weird, just kind of wanting to be around that. Mm -hmm. Like it made me feel. I don't know, maybe feel, I don't want to say cool, but maybe feel very comfortable. Like yeah, I'm like, yeah. like, whatever went on in high school, I could give a fuck less. So it's like, mm -hmm. well, these guys have my back, mm -hmm. you know, and they're a lot older. Yeah. And I was just like that goofy, funny kid that was right. around. So right, I was just right. like, oh, cool. This is fun. Yeah. But just having that, that small little window of what happens here, it's just like, it's odd. Like I, I can't even remember what it's like to be like that sometimes. Sometimes when I go back to Sacramento and mm -hmm. I go back to like certain spots I used to kick it at mm -hmm. and it's just a little ghetto and yeah. I'm like, oh, look at these fucking <laughs> trash human beings. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that's the spot I used to kick it at. Yeah, and I'm like, oh, these heathens, dude. Yeah, I mean, but you know, back then, like that's just what it was. It's like, dude, you know, when you're 12, 13 years old, you're not thinking about like, uh, what am I gonna be uh, when I'm, you know, an adult, a responsible, mature adult? Like, you have very immature thoughts, and and you're thinking about shit that's cool, and and, and you want to be kind of of a certain crowd, right? Be yeah. part of a certain crowd. So like. For me, it wasn't even like making an attempt to like be around those type of people. Yeah. It's just my background of where I was coming from. Uh like all right, here here's here's some context too to that situation is like before I, I, I went to that school, which was in like a predominantly Asian area, I was living in Lakewood, right? So I was living in Lakewood in the borderline of like HG and Long Beach. Okay. So it was pretty much Hispanics and blacks, right? Yeah. That was the community. So at my school that I was at, there were maybe like, I don't know, five other Asian kids, six yeah, other yeah. Asian kids, you know what I mean? So when I got there, I was like, what the fuck is going on? Like, where are all these Asian yeah. people coming from? Yeah. And, and like, I had to get acclimated to that too, because they were all coming from like schools within that area. So they had known each other on some level, you mm -hmm. know? Whereas for me, I'm a complete outsider. Yeah. I'm coming in and I'm like, dude, I don't know what the fuck this community is about. I don't know who the fuck these, these people are. Like yeah. everything was really foreign to me. And then so like you start to get acclimated to that. And then, you know, you start kind of uh, banding together with certain types of people. And that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. You know, depending on like what type of background you were coming from, you just kind of naturally gravitate yeah. towards that. And then those were the people who also happened to have a lot of like anger. I also feel like like Korean people too. They just they they kind of enjoy that type of culture a mm -hmm, lot. Like mm -hmm. specifically, kind of the the bullying, the younger crowd type of thing, and kind of the hierarchy. The thing. hierarchy is yeah. very weird, like yeah, in yeah. Korean culture, specific like Korean dude. So 
when I when I came to LA, I don't know if you know who this guy is. I'm not gonna say his name. He scares the fucking shit out of me. But <laughs> he, this guy. So when I came to LA, yeah. there was this uh, show that I did, mm-hmm. and there was a show specifically with a a, a Korean star, mm-hmm, right? And mm-hmm. he was uh, I'm not gonna say his name, but he was right. a rapper. Right, right. Uh, I hosted this show. And this Korean rapper, I you know, I grew up listening to him. I was mm-hmm. like, oh, this is a really cool dude. Mm-hmm. Nobody fucking told me this guy's like bipolar. <laughs> like he's fucking nuts. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. He's a fucking nut. Yeah. Nut bag, right? Yeah, yeah. And so uh, he meets me. I make a couple of jokes. He thinks I'm really funny. Yeah. And he was like, yo, you should come kick it with us, right? Uh-huh. I was like, yo, this is dope. Yeah. I, you know, fun. <laughs> you know, this dude's yeah. asking me to come out. I'm gonna, definitely going to come kick mm-hmm. it with him. And so there is... One of my homegirls knew who he was too. And so she kind of introduced me to him in the first place. That's how I you know, made the jokes or right. whatever. And he goes, yo, come to this spot. And uh, in, in, so inside this apartment building, there is a secret, uh, there's a, there's one place that's not even an actual apartment. Mm-hmm. It's, an, it's a bar, mm. but it's like a secret thing that nobody fucking knows about. You're only allowed in there if they let you in there. Right, right, right. I didn't know about it. I was yeah. like, oh, this is some fucking weird shit. Yeah. So I walk in, right? Man, I fucking shit you not. There's this, you know, odd, you know, fucking, what's his name? Odd job. The, 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 who's the bald Korean dude in like that 007? Oh no. In Austin Powers, the bald Korean dude. Bald Korean dude. In Austin Powers. In, in Austin Is it Powers? Austin Powers or the one that fucking, he has like the hat that he throws and it, it sliced off the fucking statue. Oh yeah, statue. yeah, 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 yeah. You know yeah, that yeah, Korean yeah, guy? Yeah, 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 So he looks like him. Yeah. Right. And so I walk into this room and you see this bar and it's, it's a cityscape. You can kind of see the a DTLA down this way. Mm-hmm. And when you walk in, it's, it's dimly lit and there's these RGB lights going yeah. on. There's this dude behind the bar and yeah. bald. Yeah. Yoked ass Korean dude. Yeah. Not that big. Yeah. Oh, no, he's really big. I'm sorry, uh, not that big, but he's really big. Uh-huh. And I just walk in and this guy goes, I shit you not. He goes, tiny. Yeah. And I'm like, excuse me? <laughs> right? That's the first thing. I go, excuse me? He goes, tiny. Uh-huh. And I'm like, tiny what? He uh-huh. goes, bitch, that's my fucking name. <laughs> I'm not even fucking kidding you. I almost shit my fucking pants. Yeah, yeah. And he's yoked. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, why they call him tiny? You yeah. know why they call me tiny? Yeah. I'm like, this is full. He goes, you know why they call me tiny? I'm like, nah. He goes, because I'm not tiny. <laughs> And I, I don't know at this point if he's making a joke or not because yeah. he doesn't smile. Yeah. This is a true fucking... I don't think I ever told this story on this podcast. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't smile. Yeah. So I never know when he's fucking telling a joke yeah. and he's over here just threatening me. Yeah. And I'm looking at my homegirl like, yo, who the fuck is this guy? And he yeah. goes, oh, he's sweet. Yeah. I was like, yeah, to you because you're yeah. his fucking friend. Yeah. This fool's like mean. Yeah. He's like mistreating me. Yeah. I'm sitting there and he offers me a drink. It was like a Jameson or some shit. Mm-hmm. I drink it, whatever, right? Mm. So we go off into this corner. So there's the bar here and then there's a back area where everybody chills. And <clears throat> we're sitting there and he starts telling these stories, right? And so what I later found out about that dude, he's kind of like, I heard he was like really affiliated back in the day. Then mm-hmm. he went from that to being like a, like honestly like a loan shark. Mm-hmm. So that's why he's so fucking scary. Yeah, yeah. First of all, I don't even know why he was, he could just say his his <laughs> name tiny and I'm supposed to know what the fuck he's saying. Yeah. There's no, there is no context so why are you mad at me? Yeah. Right? So I'm sitting here and I'm fucking freaked the fuck out. Yeah. So I'm sitting here. I'm just like, cool, whatever. I get to, you know, kick it with this, this legendary rapper that I yeah, look yeah. up to. Yeah. So this is where I found out that he's a little bipolar and weird. I sat there, by the way, and yeah. I thought it was going to be just us chopping it up. Yeah. And then maybe I was going to leave after an hour. Yeah. He wouldn't let me leave because he wanted to tell me his whole life story. I was there. I fucking shit you not. I was yeah. there for six hours. Oh my God. Because he wouldn't let me leave. Mm-hmm. He wouldn't let me leave and Mr. Tiny wouldn't let me leave. <laughs> right? So I'm sitting here and Tiny throughout the whole night. Yeah. He's saying some really obscure shit, like scary shit. Mm-hmm. But because I don't think he knows that he's not a fucking funny person. Yeah. Nobody knows when he's joking. Right, right. So like he would say some shit like this, right? Like this is why I'm quoting him, by the way. And he's talking about the show that's about to happen the next day. Yeah. And he goes, yo, man, wouldn't this shit be fucking funny if I just scared the whole fucking crowd and I just bought up my fucking piece and he has a gun on him. He whips it out. Yeah. I'm sitting here like, the fuck is going on? And he goes, if I just started capping people out in the crowd and I'm dead fucking silent. Yeah, yeah. Right? And he goes, that's not funny. Yeah. And I'm like, oh shit. That's funny. I, start laughing, like, ah. I just start laughing. Yeah, yeah. But how the am I supposed to know he's right, making jokes right. the whole night it was uncomfortable for six fucking hours yeah. he's making these things that nobody knows it's yeah. a fucking joke yeah. I think he's like a sociopath so I'm sitting there for six fuck and I'm 
on the verge of fucking falling asleep. I was yeah. there till 4 a.m. Oh, my God. 4 a.m. And they yeah. just kept giving me drinks over and over and over. And he was telling me about his life, how yeah. he grew up and he how he actually grew up in the States, yeah. all of his gang affiliation. And this dude's over here talking about shooting people in the crowd. I was scared shitless. So after they finally let me leave, and yeah. I'm telling you, I tried to leave. And yeah. they literally physically wouldn't let me leave. Uh, and so the next- ass back down. Yeah. <laughs> and so the next day, uh, we did the show. The show- First of all, the show was a disaster because yeah. the artist that came there, mm-hmm. he came uh, super fucking late. Yeah. He was drunk out of his mind. Yeah. And uh, when he went up on stage and he performed, yeah. he forgot all the fucking lyrics because he was out of his fucking mind. Uh-huh. Forgot the lyrics. And then on top of that, he starts talking on, when he's on the stage. Yeah. He starts talking about how he was jacking off in the room. And by you, this is this is a charity show. Oh, no. <laughs> he gets on the stage and he talks about how he was jacking off in the bathroom. Uh-huh. And then his dead grandmother came into the bathroom to scold him while he was, while he was fucking uh, whacking one off. This is uh, a fucking charity concert yeah. dude, for a good cause. Yeah. So after the show was over, right? And this show was such a fucking disaster because of that stuff. Mm-hmm. I was supposed to do um, just host the show mm-hmm. and just do like a quick, maybe 30 seconds of talking in between yeah. to introduce the next act, right, right? right? They fucked up that show so bad. Yeah. I essentially had to do 20 minutes of stand up uh-huh. fucking six times over. So I did like a two. You remember this? Right? I remember this. Yeah. You remember, I remember this? It. So yeah. I had to do that yeah. and I was fucking livid. Yeah. So this full tiny, yeah. after the show was over, he goes, he goes, hey man, you were really fucking funny. Yeah. And I was like, hey, after this, you're not going to go to the after party. You're going to come kick it with us. Uh-huh. Like I have a choice, right? Like he wasn't even giving me an option, yeah. right? I was like, oh yeah, yo, thanks, Tiny. I appreciate it, man. Yeah. He goes, I'll see y'all there. He goes, how the fuck you going to be there if you don't give me your fucking number? Yeah. I'm like, oh shit, my bad, dog. <laughs> and you know, this dude's threatening me, man. And so I'm like, all right, cool. And so I, I give him my number yeah. and I'm about to walk away. He goes, where the fuck are you going? Yeah. I'm like, I don't know. You said you're going to see me later. You're going to hit me up. Yeah. He goes, no, we're kicking it in the back right now. I'm back there. And then uh, I'm back there, right? It's that Korean rapper and then yeah. Roscoe Molly uh-huh. is back there. You remember yeah. Roscoe Molly? Yeah, so yeah. Roscoe Molly's back there. Yeah. And I'm sitting there and they're just having a conversation. None of them acknowledge me. Yeah. And I'm standing there. Yeah. And once again, I try to leave. Yeah. He doesn't let me leave. So I'm in the back for an hour yeah. watching them just talk and smoke and drink. Yeah. And I'm standing there like a statue. <laughs> yeah. He just part of the decoration. <laughs> I'm just a part. I think he just has that Korean like, like Tongzang, like punking mentality. Yeah. Yeah. So you, from what I heard, what other people told me, he goes, yo, Tiny likes you a lot. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I couldn't fucking tell. This fool's just bitching. He's like treating me like a little bitch the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. But that shit was the most uncomfortable situation I've ever been in. This is me as an adult. Right. Number right. Number one, I'm not from LA. I don't know anybody. Yeah. I don't know who's affiliated. I don't know what neighborhoods I'm in. I don't know what parts are dangerous. I don't know what parts are safe. Right. So this whole time, my asshole is sweating. This guy just would, kept punking me, but it was weird. Like going in the back, I see Roscoe and Molly back there and they're yeah. just chopping it up. Yeah. And I'm trying to leave. And he's like, Where are you going? <laughs> and I'm like, No, I'm just chilling. And I stood there with my hands crossed, mm-hmm. and then Lone Bo- That's when I found out after he's kind of like a loan shark, and uh-huh. he just does shit. So I'm like, okay, well, I'm I'm gonna. Once you flash a gun at me, I'm I'm gonna stay. Here. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm gonna, I think I think I'm gonna just chill and uh, I'm gonna chill and I'm gonna wait till he allows me to leave. Yo, after that shit, I blocked his number and I fucking disappeared. <laughs> I disappeared off the face of the fucking earth. He kept on wanting to hang out, uh-huh. but I don't I don't I didn't know what that entailed. This yeah, shit was yeah. so fucking scary. Fuck yeah. that guy. I love you. Don't hit me. <laughs> don't find me. No, but I mean, yeah, a lot of that, a lot of that was the case though. Back in the day was like so much of a demanding respect, you know, and it's like, if you don't know who I am, I'm going to make sure, you know, real quick, you you get familiar with who I am. Right. And a lot of that would be kind of like, you know, bravado and and like being talking and acting tough. Right. Mm -hmm. And, but the thing is, it's like, you don't, you also don't want to test it either. Absolutely. Yeah. It's like, all right, man, if, if. If that's the the persona that you're presenting to me, I'll believe it. You know, you don't got to go over the top for me to 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 like make your case. Yeah. I believe you. I 100%. <laughs> and first of all, the the girl after after the homegirl who introduced me to him, mm-hmm. right? I stopped talking to her after this. She don't even know why. It's because you left me yeah. with a bunch of people who are flashing their fucking gun at me. Oh, you, she bounced. She bounced. Oh. She bounced at 1 a.m. Oh man. So I was pissed. Yeah. I was like, she goes, I'm sleepy. And yeah. she got up and she just fucking left. I was so fucking mad. And I was yeah. just there. Yeah. No, she that I can imagine how uncomfortable. <laughs> she didn't she didn't even ask if I wanted to go. Yeah, yeah. She goes, I'm really sleepy, guys. I'll see y'all tomorrow. She goes, and then I'm like, you couldn't have taken me with you, yeah. bitch. 
<laughs> and they were, the funny shit was too when they said that I assumed that I was gonna leave too and this little tiny interjects he goes yeah me, the boys are just gonna kick in a drink and he looked at me and I'm like I'm the boys I'm not one of the boys yeah. that's what I'm I knew I was like here. that's what I knew I was supposed to be here all night yeah, yeah and it was weird listening to that dude's life story he was talking about crazy shit man just like talking about when he when he said that he wanted to go in the crowd and just mm-hmm. start blasting off on people mm-hmm. I'm like this guy's a fucking nut job and how the fuck is anybody supposed to know that's a joke right right that's not a joke yeah. that's, just <laughs> that's a threat that's a terrorist yeah threat. and then he got mad at me because I didn't laugh yeah so I was like no you are the worst stand up comic I ever met in my life no, for sure they're like they're, they're you know you, you definitely meet those persons personality types who are you know a little bit more extreme with that shit i mean bro there's man there's been a lot of crazy shit happen you know uh especially like during that whole 90s period early 2000s period with you know people just like hot tempered they got strapped out of it yeah dude bro they it, it shit pops off in a hurry right yeah. like there was this one time um at, at a at a fucking uh uh pool hall right everybody used to go to pool halls back then you know of course yeah and that's just where everybody kicked it yeah and then there was this spot where a lot of people um a lot of basically bangers used to come out and kick it but then because of that shit would tend to pop off there a little bit more frequently than a normal pool hall right because when you got like people who aren't affiliated or, or don't know each other coming like outsiders coming in and and maybe they're from another set. I mean, shit will pop off quickly, mm-hmm. right? So you know, there there were times when like things would get crazy, and like yeah, this one time shit popped off. Dude went to his fucking uh, car, pulled out a shotgun, cocked that shit, boom, hit you know, sprayed it on the ground. Fucking the 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 um the pellet space. Well, what do you what would you call it? Pellets or what would you call it? It's like I don't know the buckshot, shrapnels or whatever. Or whatever. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it hit the fucking thing. <laughs> Got lodged in the dude's head. You know, it's like that's how quickly it would escalate. You know, like people weren't fucking around, man. Like, and and like once people started getting sh- so here was the biggest kind of um like double whammy, uh, was people started getting strapped and then tweaking became oh really shit. big. Yeah, the tweaking yeah, yeah. epidemic, you yeah. know? And so like people were fucking like just twacked out of their mind and and, and they're running around strapped. So they're not even think they haven't even slept in like 24, 48 That's hours. Nuts, man. And, and you know, they're not thinking straight. And so a lot of crazy shit would happen, man. That, that respect thing is something that was uh that was always consistently tested. When I went to a house party once, mm-hmm. uh once again, I mm-hmm. just keep getting invited to shit that I don't want to <laughs> fucking go to. I don't I had a real problem with saying no. <laughs> you know? Well, it's it's the type of people you don't want to say no to. Exactly. Cause right? they're also the funny thing, and I was talking about uh, to bar- I was talking about that was with Bart recently. It was mm-hmm. like, it was a lose lose situation. Like for somebody like me, mm-hmm. as a younger person, yeah, in the group, yeah. It's like okay, if I say no, these older youngs are gonna beat the fucking shit out of me, mm-hmm. or I would have to go out, and they would force. I would have to be forced to fight somebody else. So mm-hmm. I might as well just do what they say and yeah. then keep it keep it all cool, yeah. right? Because they only, you know, it was partially my fault because I did like being around them. Mm-hmm. But when I, I remember when I went to this one house party and this dude. And this is like when Air Force Ones were fucking popping, mm-hmm. right? So he had these brand new Air Force Ones and they were inside this house party. House was fucking dirty and filthy, by the way. And dudes were smoking or whatever. Guy uh, spits mm-hmm. and then he spits on this dude's shoe. Uh huh. Looks at the guy. He goes, oh shit, my bad. And he just turns around. Uh-huh. This dude fucking gets up. I had no idea who this guy is. Yeah. Guy gets up. Smallest little fucking Vietnamese dude you have ever seen. Motherfucker's <laughs> cute as shit. Looks like, he looks like a little fucking troll doll, yeah. right? With fucking yeah. bangs. And yeah. he gets up and he goes, clean my fucking shoe. Yeah. And he goes like, what? He's like, fuck you. Yeah. With the N word. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right? And I'm like, I'm watching this. I'm, yeah. sitting, on, I'm sitting on a couch. <laughs> I'm sitting on a couch, by the way, right? Yeah. And when he gets up, he gets up and I'm talking about like, seven or eight dudes get up at the same time so mm-hmm. he was rolling deep right no fucking clue all of them strapped mm-hmm. right and he goes like fuck you n-word <laughs> right <laughs> he looks at him he goes now nah, you gonna clean my fucking shoe lifts his shirt up yeah everybody is strapped yeah stood yeah up. yeah that dude got on his fucking knees yeah had a, a napkin and he wiped his fucking shoe off and yeah. he told him to get the fuck yeah. out yeah that shit scared the fucking <laughs> shit out of me man he made a grown-ass dude that's twice his size <laughs> yeah this little five foot two asian dude yeah. wipe his shoe with the napkin apologize and leave. But, but you know that's 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 what it is though man it's like dude 
you, you have to really weigh out the pros and cons in that situation because it's like, all right, if what these are you dudes, do? yeah, if these dudes are strapped, are you going to really lose your life over you not being able to swallow your pride for, I mean, yeah, it's, it's fucking, uh, you know, emasculating and embarrassing for sure. But at the end of the day, your that life. Shit's, yeah, that's just going to be forgotten after that night. Dude, I was sitting on the couch. I was about to yeah. tug on his jeans. Like, dude, just fucking wipe bro, your shoes, please. Bro. Like, I, I don't want to die. Dude, you know, th- look, man, there, there's, there's been an instance too, where, um, my homie, uh, basically like a girl he was dating, mm-hmm. uh, her older brother was, he, he, he was a banger, right? Yeah. And he, he was, he was a pretty rough dude. And, uh, they went out drinking together and, um, I think it, he brought out one of his other homies and then they were at a bar, I think in K-Town drinking and then, um, some shit kind of popped off, you know, uh, mm-hmm. with, with some, somebody else that was there. And then, um, this, I mean, I'll tell you after the podcast who it was that, yeah, that yeah. popped off, but yeah. So his hit the, the, the girl's older brother kind of got into it, I think with somebody else. And then all of a sudden dude gets up and then like 10 other dudes get up and then they all put their hands under their shirt <laughs> and then the dude is like oh fuck yeah he wasn't he he didn't have a strap on him yeah but even if he did wouldn't matter you got 10 dudes surrounding you yeah who, he didn't know that everybody sitting around was all part of the same group yeah right same shit i mean this dude's an actually like from what i hear i i've never met the dude but he, he's apparently, you know, had a like rough past and, and mm-hmm. is like for reals, not not just like a uh, posing. But yeah. even in that situation, you got you got to you got to take it. Yeah. It's like, you I, die. yeah, I if I try to do something, I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> you know, not only am I done, my little sister, you know, my friend, I've been put in a similar situation before, too, where. I was chilling with some homies. So this is when I'm like 17, 18. Yeah. By then, you know, I'm just, my focus is I'm trying to get to college. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm just trying to like go down a straight path, not not get into any trouble. I'm hanging out and um, a group of maybe like 15 dudes walk uh, walk into where we're hanging out at. It's it's outdoor area, outdoor seating, right? And there, there's, there's like two islands, right? So I'm sitting on one side and then this other group of guys come in and then they sit on the other side pretty uh, good amount of distance between us. And then I just kind of look at them and then I'm like, ah, you know, these dudes uh, kind of look like, you know, they're up to no good. Yeah. But it, it doesn't really matter, right? So I don't really think anything of it. And then maybe about like 15 minutes later, like me and my homies are just sitting and talking. Um, and, and mind you, most of these guys that I'm with are not, never were really involved in that type of stuff. They're, yeah. they're good guys, you know? One other homie, was you know yeah but two girls walk by Mm -hmm. walk by our table they're pretty cute they they walk by this way and then and then stop like a little bit past our table and then start walking back i was like all right that's kind of weird i thought they were like going somewhere you know maybe to the bathroom or to a store whatever and then they're cute so i say what's up right Uh (laughs) i just say what's up and then they look and they smile at me so i'm like all right cool and then I just go back to talking with my homies. Uh, maybe not a minute later, I start to see like five dudes starting to walk over to our area. Yeah. And then I it catches my, I see it from the corner of my eye. So I, I, I turn my head and I look and then they're walking over and they're dogging me. Uh-huh. And I get fucking irritated, you know, mm-hmm. like. I don't think I, I still had that maturity to check my my uh, emotions. Yeah. So I'm like, what the fuck are you looking at, man? Yeah. <laughs> I said that to him, right? Yeah. What the fuck you say? Vietnamese guy. Yeah. I said, what the fuck are you looking at? You know? Walks over. And then uh, he gets in my face, so I get up. Uh-huh. And then um, his other homies who came with him, they stand behind uh, the friends that I'm with. My Now- the friends that I'm with have their back turned to them. Oh shit. They're standing behind them. I see these fools pull out shanks and then put it under their shirt like this. So this guy who's coming up to here to me is sitting here fucking just talking shit to my face, right? Meanwhile, I'm just looking at those dudes. Yeah. And then I'm like, I I swear to God, this felt like a fucking eternity. Yeah. It was maybe like a minute, two minute long. 
And so I'm like, what the fuck? Like, I want to fucking like bank this dude, yeah. right? I'm going to fuck this dude up. But as soon as I punch this dude, my homies are going to get stabbed. Yeah. So all these thoughts are running through my head. Like, I'm like, dude, what do I, what do I fucking do? You know? That gives me anxiety. No, for sure. So I'm thinking like, oh, fuck, if they get stabbed, their parents are going to fucking have to, you know, go get them at the hospital. Maybe they're going to die. Like what? Because, because yeah. I can't. And then this dude shoved me, right? That's when I was, I made a fist and I was like, oh, you fucking yeah. did. And then my other homie gets up out of his seat too, you know? And, and and this is the only one other homie who's like, you know, who's kind of from that same background. Yeah. So he was down, right? But then I still am in a predicament. I'm like, yeah. what the fuck do I do here? Yeah. Um, And then the only thing that fucking say, I couldn't, I couldn't take action. I was like paralyzed, you know? Yeah. I had a fist, I was fucking angry, but then I'm like, these dudes are gonna fuck... As soon as I punch him, boom, boom. Yeah. You know, like from the back. That's it. Yeah. Luckily, thank fucking God, cop showed up. Oh, shit. Yeah. That's the only fucking time I was glad to see my yeah. you know? <laughs> Only time in my fucking life. Cops show up. What's going on here? And I'm like, Whew. Yeah. Because I'm not an officer. We're just, you know, we're just all friends. We're just talking, you know? Oh, man, I would have snitched so <laughs> fast, dog. I would have been the no. biggest snitch ever. No. I'm like, officer, those men have knives on them, and they're trying to assault me. No, no, no. So I was just like, oh, you know, nothing's going on, officer. You know, we're just all friends. We're just talking. You know, we're just hanging out. Um, He's like, you sure nothing's going on here? It's like, nah, it's cool. Dog, it's I cool. would have been blinking yeah. like this. I was like, officer, nothing's going on. <laughs> I would have blinked my eyes super hard. What's wrong with your eyes, son? You need to fucking see this shit. <laughs> you see? Yeah, what? I would have been like, like this, yeah. motherfucker. Um, and then so uh, after that happened, those guys uh, left, right? They went back to the other side. Mm -hmm. Now, little did they know, there was actually another table Um of group of guys that we knew mm -hmm. and they saw shit was going down too and they had bottles on them so they oh. were starting to pour out their drinks yeah. ready to fucking hit the guys yeah. who were standing behind my friends they're behind those guys yeah. and so it was just like this just just fucking cluster fuck of a situation you know yeah. and all of it would have triggered with me throwing that punch yeah and the guy who came up to me he never like punched me he just kept pushing me yeah. right he wanted you to do yeah, something yeah he wanted so, me so to so yeah exactly he want he was instigating and and like i was like oh, thank fucking god like that that situation kind of died the way it died and then i saw five minutes later those dudes bounced yeah and i was like you know what we should get the fuck out of here too mm -hmm. let's leave right so we leave um after we leave from the parking lot maybe about 10 minutes later my homie calls me he's like hey you guys left for sure right and i was like yeah why what's up he's like i just came to get some gas and those guys are at the gas station Oh he's shit. Like, I don't think they recognize me, but I hear them over talking. They're telling, like, they're calling their friends to bring guns and they're going to go back there. God damn. You know, so like if, if we stuck around, they probably would have lit us up, you know? You should have <laughs> just told the cop, they have weapons on them, officer, and I am a good Christian boy. Dog, I would have snitched so fast, dude. You know I'm not about that life. I'm like, motherfucker, you, I would have been crying. No, nah, but the thing is, though, it's like, you know, kind of it's like if, if if you have an exchange of words, you got to be ready for it to, you know, get to that level, mm -hmm. right? Um, I mean, I've had friends get stabbed from trying to stop a fight, Yeah, you know, because shit pops off and they're trying to get in the middle and they get stabbed, you yeah. know? So it's like, you can't, you can't be around that type of environment, that type of people, even if you're like the most peaceful dude. Oh, right? 100%. Right. And, and not expect something to happen. And, and so like, I think I told you the story too. Like once I got into college and then I would connect with some of these, you know, friends or whatever, like one time we're hanging out in front of a, a you know, a dude's driveway, just kicking it. Cars driving by, everybody's acting a little bit weird. Every time a car drives by, like a little bit, you know, kind of fidgety. I'm like, yo man, what the fuck's going on? Is there something I should know about? Like you guys are acting weird every time a car is driving by. Like, yeah, you know, just, Let's just say, get ready to duck and roll. It's like, what the fuck, man? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, nah, I'm, I'm good on that, man. Yeah. I, I'm in college now. You know, I don't need that shit. I, I just fucking left, you know? But I, I think, like, that's the thing, too, when uh, it's weird, like, when I hear these stories, like, I, you know, I go back to that moment where I'm just like this young little goofy kid mm -hmm. and I see that dude get his fucking Air Force uh, One spit on mm -hmm. and then fucking 
a bunch of dudes stand up and they're all strapped. And I'm like, what the fuck? You Dude. know, and I remember too, like in that moment, what it felt like. I could kind of feel it now. I was scared. Mm -hmm. it, those moments where you feel like you're going to die feel like a fucking eternity. Yeah. It, that I think that altercation had to be at most maybe 40 seconds. Right, 40 right. seconds to a minute right, max. Right. That shit felt like 20 no, minutes. For sure. When you're when 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 shit is on the line, man, that that thing is going to feel like forever, you know? That's why I was always scared of guns because yeah. just seeing that shit around yeah. you makes you so scared and I think like Joe and I talked about this too. It doesn't really matter because mm -hmm. a, a girl was asking about, you know, how to get out of gang affiliation. I was mm -hmm. like, I was never in a gang, mm -hmm. but I do understand that just because you think that you could separate yourself from it because you're not a gang member per se mm -hmm. and you want to just kick it with them, bullets don't fucking discriminate. Nah, man. If yeah. somebody comes up and they just start spraying, yeah. you're going to get shot. Yeah. Yeah, they're not going to just... Oh, okay. And then by the way, and then shoot the person next to you. Yeah. I think that's like the scary thing too. I think people get people get enticed by the the power and the affiliation of being with somebody who are or being with a group of people that can enforce their will on somebody else. Mm -hmm. And it makes you feel empowered. Yeah. And it's usually from people who kind of grew up either bullied or they had like a fucked up uh childhood or past mm -hmm. and that's the stuff that becomes the thing that you get drunk off of yeah, yeah. you know and, and that's the thing it's like thank god that that culture is not popular mm -hmm. anymore you know uh, i mean yeah you still see you still see like people who are active in that type of lifestyle and then when i see it it's just fascinating to me like yeah. we're in fucking 2020 and uh you still are about that life. My God, you're a relic from the past, but you know. Hey. Dude, I still can't believe you didn't snitch. I would have snitched oh, so nah, bad, nah, dude. Bro. I had no pride in that shit. When I see somebody with a knife, I'm like, officer, <laughs> just to let you know. <laughs> shot, 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 shot. No, yeah. Neck motherfucker right there. <laughs> he got the knife to my friend neck, motherfucker. <laughs> Take him away, bitch. Dude, but yeah, I mean, like, that was that was always the thing with like the, the Vietnamese gangsters, is they always rolled deep, man. They were they were like oh, for rolling sure, 20, man. 30 heads, you I'm know. Something, man you guys don't fuck with people who who grew up in a war-torn country exactly exactly people like that like yeah. what they grew up with and the stuff that they saw is different from whatever you think that you saw mm -hmm. so you grew up with people who i don't know maybe your fucking uncle was a was a bang or whatever i'm talking about people escaped like government persecution watching people die get yeah. shot they don't give a fuck yeah you know yeah. that's why these like vietnamese uh cambodian southeast asian gangs yeah when they came over to the states and people would try to punk them and they kind of became this solid group of at the time, they were, they became a gang. It's yeah, like, right. yo, I just saw my my brother get his arms exploded off when he, <laughs> you know, when he landed on a mine, yeah. or I saw somebody just try to saw my fucking limbs off. You right. think that this little pistol scares me? I'll yeah. find you and I'll fucking kill you. Right, right. It was frightening. Yeah, even some of these like old heads too, like. Uh, some of like the 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 older people in our neighborhood is like, yo, we don't fuck with Asians. Asians are fucking crazy because they know they know about like the Southeast Asian gangs. Uh, well, I mean, that's the thing, man. Is um, even in the LA uh, LA area during the '90s is like you know Asian gangs were were holding their own oh, against sure. against you know like Hispanic gangs and black gangs or whatever. Yeah. But problem was once they started getting locked up. Now, the prison system is completely different. Yeah. You don't got numbers there. You yeah. don't got representation. So there was a green light on Asians when they were getting locked up. Mm. And then once they got into prison, it was all bad. Game over, man. Yeah. Game fucking over, dude. Like, yeah, honestly, getting killed would be a blessing. You yeah. know, like just getting killed and, and just having it end there. Dude, our that, friend our friend uh, uh, told us this one story where he, uh, really nice dude, but his his turning point in his, is his life was when he went to jail. Mm -hmm. If you met him now, you would never think that he was a piece of shit. Yeah. Like, he's literally the straightest fucking arrow you ever met in your life. But mm -hmm. he was telling me that when he went to jail, he had to be affiliated with Asian people. Mm -hmm. If not, he was just fucked. Mm -hmm. So you don't really have much of a choice. You got to be with the people that look like you. No, for sure. It's highly for sure. racial. In for there. sure. It is. It is. So, it's all right. It's for your protection. Exactly. And the thing is, because there's no uh, representation for Asians in a yeah. lot of the prison systems here, you have when you make your claim, you're in the brothers and others group. Yeah. Yeah. So you're in with the the black guys and and like others, yeah. You know, which is the minority well, population. When he was there, he had to go with these uh with a bunch of the 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 fucking Asian gangs and shit. Uh -huh. But you know, it was that whole fucking hierarchy punking situation. Yeah. And they were in that whole time, they were grooming him to basically cockfight, like like chickens with another with another young dude that came into the oh, to, to the man. prison cell. Yeah. It was another Asian kid. Yeah. And they were he was they were grooming him, training them, making him do push ups, work out so they could watch them fight each other. Oh. And so the day before that they were set up to fight, he got let go. He got 
out. He mm-hmm. got bail. Mm-hmm. So I, I think he told me it was like a few months. Yeah. And then the day before he's supposed to throw down with this guy, which he doesn't want to fight because mm-hmm. he went to jail for, I think it was like robbing homes. So he mm-hmm. wasn't a violent dude. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he just liked money. And I think he had a, he had a, a, a drug addiction. So mm-hmm. he was feeling his drug, drug addiction with the money that he was getting uh, from stealing from homes. Speaking of that, man, I saw so many, so many people just go down a dark, dark path with the fucking drugs, man. Like, one of my good homies too, you know, that we grew up with, um, at some point we kind of, our paths, um, split and, um, you know, I, I wasn't seeing him on a regular basis at all. Yeah. And then, you know, I, I, I saw him, I think when I was like 15, you know, and 15 or 16 around there, there's just nobody home when, when I was trying to talk with him, there's nobody home. Like mm-hmm. it's just lifeless behind his eyes. I'm like, dude, what the fuck happened to you, bro? Like, what what are you on right now, man? I think he was on like five different things. Yeah. You know, he was dropping out of school, going to fucking crack houses, and it's just like, what happened, man? Like, what the fuck happened, bro? Like, how how the fuck did you end up like getting in this uh, position in this situation? Um, but that's the thing. Like, some people just have very addictive personalities. And, and they, yeah, when they get hooked, they get hooked. Yeah, man. Let me tell you something. Cocaine is a hell of a drug. I saw a video <laughs> of this homeless person uh-huh. that was on coke, uh-huh. and he fucking smoked that pipe. Yeah, and then he went to another homeless dude, opened up his butt cheeks, and blew that fucking <laughs> crack smoke in his ass. He said. <laughs> I was like, yo, cocaine is a fucking hell of a drug. This motherfucker smoked coke. It was like crack coke. I don't know what the fuck it was, but yeah. he basically took a hit off this pipe and he started blowing up this dude's ass. I was oh, like, damn, God. what the fuck is going on with this drug, man? This shit's a hell of a ride, huh? That, that That's that's why drugs are a scary thing, man. And, and it makes you do these crazy things. Did you watch uh, Breaking Bad? Yeah, of course. Man, yeah. I, I, I've never wanted to sell drugs so bad in my life, man. <laughs> I know it destroys communities, but that yeah. shit was, man, he was making so much money. He was. He but got greedy. I mean, that's the thing, man. Fast money's fast money. It comes fast and it goes fast, you know? It, it I, never lasts. If I knew the formula to mm-hmm. make that blue magic, I would sell that shit. The moment, the moment I hit... Two mil in cash, yeah. your boy's done. I'm off the radar. <laughs> I will teach somebody. That's what a, you say. Nah. That's what you say. But but think about it, man. Is it's not just about making the money. It's like the type of people you're going to be dealing with. I'll, I'll groom somebody else. As I'm doing this, yeah. I'm gonna groom some. I'm gonna teach you everything. And I'm yeah. like, hey guys, this is the new guy. Yeah. He does it better than me. Mm-hmm. You could have my cell number. Hit me up whenever yeah. you want. But I've I've done my job. I yeah. groomed three or four of these guys. I, you know what? I've never, ever seen um, somebody who, who slangs, right, makes it big time and not have it get caught up with them at some point. Never, you know? They never I, met David So. No, I know one dude. I know one dude. He, he did get caught up, but he was still able to bounce uh, bounce back from it. Mm. And, 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 you know, because uh, he, he has a very entrepreneurial spirit. So yeah. he put his, you know, money to work in, in other ways. But... Aside from him, which is like a, a huge exception, yeah, man, nine point nine out of ten times, man. And it, I don't even like drugs, so I would never <laughs> smoke my whole supply, dude. I've my biggest regret in life. There are so many things that people regret in their lives. My yeah. biggest regret is I never sold drugs. I really wish I would have, dude. This guy, yeah. I, uh, I'm not even fucking with you. I legit wish I would have sold fucking weed in high school mm. because I don't like it, yeah. you know. Yeah. But I'm a good business dude. I would have fucking banked off that shit, man. Well, that was the time to sell it too. Shit. I mean, like, it was not easy to really come across, mm-hmm. you know? And if you had some that good shit. shit. everywhere at my parents' store. I was like, man, I would just. <laughs> I would have sold that shit like a motherfucker, dude. I would have sold that shit at my parents' store. <laughs> Hot your parents. I put that shit in some Dax grease. I put that shit in a fucking uh, a number two fucking weave, uh, 10 inch. <laughs> I just put it inside the fucking weave and been like, hey, here you go. Here's your special order. It's like, how much is it? $70. You know why it's 70 <laughs> Oh, my Slide God. Oh, I would have fucking done a great job, man. No, nah, like, when, I, when I was slinging, it was just to smoke for free, man. You know? It's like, that was that was the motivation, awesome. you know? It was, I would have I I grown my own shit. It would have been nice. You don't have that type of foresight when you're 13, 14 years old, hey, bro. man. <laughs> if I had a time machine, that's what I would have done. Oh, yeah. Well, if you have a time machine. Um, but yeah, man, it was just that whole era was, you know, and the thing is, I I would do it all over again. You mm-hmm. know, I when I look at uh, how teenagers are growing up now and how I grew up at that age, I would pick that that time period than, mm-hmm. than this current time period. 
I, I, I don't really have a specific reason for it. I just think right now it's just, uh, I, I look at things and just very soft and like too sensitive, you yeah. know? I'm like, back then, is it a little bit more uh, rugged, you know? Yeah. Uh, and yeah, sure, there were a lot of crazy shit going on um, and happening too. Sometimes uh, your your uh, life might be threatened, but <laughs> makes you tougher, you know? <laughs> it does make you tough, man. I feel like if, when you once you feel like you have your life in danger, mm. it kind of, uh, it's a very unique experience. It's, it's weird how... Like that slow down phase, and it kind of makes you rethink things a lot. It's like, oh man, this is a uh, this is not the thing that I enjoy. Yeah, no, for sure. But but you know, we can't discount the fact that we are hugely fortunate and blessed to 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 be able to look back on it and and and, and think that in hindsight, mm -hmm. right? There are other people who weren't as fortunate, like who maybe uh, weren't trying to do the things that some of these people were doing, but just because by hanging out with them or or being affiliated with certain people. They got the shittier end of the stick, you know? Yeah, man. I mean, if, when I look back on it too, I, I understand why, even though I, I, you know, I was never in a gang or something like that, why I enjoyed it being around something like, like them mm -hmm. because of, once again, like I said it before, it was just the respect that you would get from it. And yeah. specifically because I was such a dweeby ass kid. I was so geeky. I had these thick glasses. People would always target me, yeah, you know? Yeah. And it was always that kind of like, I don't know what it is, like that chip on your shoulder. Mm -hmm. It's like... I was that one dude in the group where it was like, hey, he's going to be the easy target, but if you piss him off, he's going to fuck you up. You know what I mean? Because I was a big boy. Yeah, I was, yeah. I've been this size since I was fucking uh, in eighth grade. Yeah. So yeah. I was like 5'10", 5 5'11", 5 already in eighth grade. Yeah. But I was such a nice dude, yeah. but I had a very bad temper. Uh -huh. So at that point, and obviously it starts to equalize out when you're a little older, right. people start getting taller. But when right. you're fucking 14 and you're 15 and you're bigger than everybody else, yeah. it's like people, of course, they're going to try to punk the biggest, nicest dude because it's an easy target. Mm -hmm. But then that was the thing that always used to bother me because I wouldn't bother anybody else. Well, it, along with the hierarchy thing too, it's like, it's really flexing because you see like a big guy mm -hmm. and then it's usually the smaller guys who are trying to do the punking. Always. Right, right. Because so, so for them, it's like, they think, I'm going to use you as a platform. Yeah, yeah. It was so fucking annoying. I had to deal with that shit all the fucking yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. And I just, I hated that shit. I was like, what the fuck? No, for sure. Alone? For sure. For yeah. sure. Um, there was a time when uh, this, I think he was like a sophomore when uh, we were uh, in eighth grade. So he's two years older. So obviously like he's already gone through puberty. So mm -hmm. he's hit his growth spurt. He's a much bigger guy, uh, upperclassman, right? But he he did some shit to like one of my homies, and basically like we we walked over to where he was at, um, and I think the dude had like pulled a plastic knife or some shit, you know, like some, <laughs> something corny as yeah. fuck, right? Like he he did something and he pulled a plastic knife. What the fuck? Yeah. Bitch. So so yeah. we went over to him. Yeah, we made him get get on his knees and apologize and beg for forgiveness in front of all his friends. That's fucking like nuts. Yeah, to, to fucking guys who are 13 years old, <laughs> 14 years old, you know? But that was the thing is that it's like, it's a different group, you know? Yeah. It's like, it doesn't matter. We don't respect the fact that you're older yeah. and that you're an upperclassman. If shit goes down, what do you think is going to happen? Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> it, really comes, it really comes down to that. Yeah. And again, so it's one of those situations where you have to make a call. Yeah. Is my pride worth, you know, me getting my ass beat or am I just going to suck it up and be like, let me tell you something, people getting your ass beat does not feel good. <laughs> it fucking sucks, man. <laughs> Especially like when uh, some of the older homies would, they would get into something and there's no real questions asked. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think it's easier from some people's perspective when they say, well, you just didn't have to be in that situation, but you didn't grow up like we did. Mm -hmm, so you don't mm -hmm. understand what was at stake. You didn't no, understand for sure. the, the how the protection felt good. Yeah. And it's like at this time too, you can't you can't just take and not give back. Yeah. You can't take that protection. Yeah. And then when shit goes down, you don't do anything. Mm -hmm. There's a bigger consequence for that shit. Yeah. Like you're you're the bitch and then they'll fuck you up. Yeah. So <laughs> at this point, I hated this shit too. It's like, yo, shit's going down. I'm like, oh fuck. Yeah. You know, because yeah. I don't want to fight. Yeah. But I'm a big dude. Yeah. So they expect certain things out of For me. For sure. The big guys always get the most pressure. It's you know? Fucking annoying. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so yeah. whenever shit went down, dude, there's this one story where we're older at this point, uh -huh. right? Um, 
I'm not. I, I went to Riverside. I got kicked out. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I decided to go to community college. And mm-hmm. at, when I was, by the time I was like 20 years old, I, I just kind of stopped drinking heavy. Mm-hmm. So I was drinking heavy since I was like fucking like 15. So mm-hmm. I, I just stopped drinking. Mm-hmm. Um, and didn't really like it so much. It was just, even the first reason, the main reason why I drank in the first place was because of social pressure. For sure. For because sure. Because of all the it's older. It's a cool huh? thing to do. Exactly. Right. And I'm a big guy. I can yeah. drink pretty well. Um, but we were at this lady's house and she used to grow like weed and shit. Mm-hmm. Uh, I heard she's like, she's still in jail cause she, uh, obviously was giving out drugs to minors. So, oh, you know. Oh, so when you say lady, you're talking about an older lady. Oh, older oh lady, okay. Like, older lady. <laughs> like, uh, she, so in, in Sacramento, when you go down this road, yeah. now there's like new housing developments, yeah. but that whole road was just all farms and shit. Well, she had a plot of land and a house that she used to just let all of us kick it at. So we would throw parties there or whatever, whatnot. Right. And I, she went to jail, I think, because she was growing like sativa mm-hmm. and she was just, you know, giving us weed and shit. I never smoked. So I, yeah. I didn't do drugs. Yeah, but, yeah. you know, she was just smoking people loud, people yeah. getting drunk. Everybody's a fucking What the fuck minor. is wrong with her? I don't know. Her kid, I, she had a kid too. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. I thought kid. it was just like this random fucking lady who's inviting minors to her place. Kind of. I, I never actually met her, uh-huh. her kid. Okay. But I only knew of that place. Uh huh. I'm not gonna say her name, yeah, but yeah, yeah. Um, out of respect because uh-huh. she was so so cool. But uh-huh. we used to call her Mama and her name. Right? Okay, let's call her Mama Jackie. Yeah, so her name yeah. was Mama Jackie, right? Uh-huh. And so uh, <laughs> this one time, this is not just one time; this happened multiple times. Uh-huh. But usually, when you guys see a party going down, if somebody wants to show up and they're not fucking invited, that means they're trying to start some shit. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, if you're not fucking invited, you're not fucking invited. Yeah. This isn't some kind of open party where you kind of roll up, roll up to somebody's house. Yeah. Un- unexpected right, uninvited right. and then you're like yo what's going on yeah because number one people are smoking mm-hmm. there's drinks they didn't contribute they're not mm-hmm. allowed to come through you're not one of the homies right so consistently this would be a huge problem but the one time that it was super big was when <laughs> i'm 22 at this point mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. i haven't seen this lady in a very long time and they were still throwing parties out there that's crazy like, oh this is <laughs> all right cool whatever yeah. I'm, I'm not young anymore but yeah. you know we went out there and when we were kicking it, I remember this is my, this is my, a buddy of mine, and he's like, "Yo, some some dudes are trying to come into the party," uh-huh. and I'm like, "I already know what that means, man. <laughs> like, you know, I'm I don't want to deal with this shit." Yeah. So I'm like, "Okay, I already know what this means." Yeah. And now, mind you, I already felt like I was obligated to do something because not too long ago, before that, he actually helped me out in a very bad situation, mm-hmm. which I didn't want to be in. Mm-hmm. But then I called him up and he came through. So, and we'll talk about the story at another time, but he, he helped me out. So I still owed him one, right? Which I didn't <laughs> fucking like. Yeah. And so I'm sitting there and I'm just like, please, please just, just leave. Yeah. Right. But these dudes rolled up to the house party and they, they wouldn't fucking leave. Mm-hmm. They decided that they weren't going to leave and they were just like, we're going to come through anyways. Mm-hmm. Fucking bad idea. Yeah. This dude has a fucking short temper and mind yeah. you, that pa- part, that house party, everybody knows each other. Right, right. Right? Some of them are affiliated, some of them aren't, yeah. but they're all homies because we all grew up together because yeah. most, of, at this point, a majority of people stopped doing stupid shit yeah. and they all grew up. Yeah. So we're there and he goes, hey man, he goes, you know, shit's about to pop off. I'm like, fuck. And so literally you hear some shit go down. He grabs a bat, I grab a bat and it's just on. <laughs> And then you're just swinging yeah. at that point. You don't yeah. know who the fuck is hitting anybody else. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just cracking people. Just yeah. <laughs> and I'm trying to do it in a way where it's enough just to hurt them. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. What Not I mean? to kill them. Yeah. yeah. And, I, and at this point, like, it's just, I just remember, and it was dumb too, because it's like a house party full of like 30 people. And these mm. guys rolled up with like four guys. Mm. And obviously some of them checked them out to see if they were strapped. They weren't mm. even strapped. Mm. So I was like, what the fuck did you think yeah. was going to happen? Yeah. But then I guess they had a couple of homies in the car waiting. So it was four guys in the front and they had like three or four homies in the back. I don't remember. I couldn't count. It was super yeah. late at night. It was dark. Yeah. But all those motherfuckers got fucked up. But just going through that situation and thinking like, I have to do something because I owe this guy something. Yeah. And it sucked, right? I yeah. don't want to do that shit. I, I just left uh, UC Riverside. Mm. Uh, maybe a couple of years ago, I was going to community college and I was transfer over. I was trying to transfer over to Sac State, but because I made a choice to hang out in that scenario, that's what you get. <laughs> this is what I get. This is what I deserve. Yeah. After that, I'm like, for real, no yeah. more of this shit. Yeah. Like, if, if we're going over to like these big party situations, I don't know anybody. Mm-hmm. I'm just not going. Well, okay. First of all, a house party still is never like a good, a good idea. idea. Yeah. Like it's 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 different from what a house party is considered today, and then mm-hmm. the house party we're talking about from you know yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. that time period. So it's just some fucking always a recipe for trouble yep. and disaster. Dumb. Some shit always happens, bro. Man, I could talk to you. I could. I have so many weird house party stories. Like, bro, there's some of these girls too that were fucking hoes, man. I yeah. remember. I remember. What? <laughs> 
uh, does he listen to my podcast? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, okay. I, I, well, just use an alias. We'll use an alias. Yeah. But this dude actually ended up burying this girl, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And uh, he doesn't even fucking know when I when I when I met her, mm-hmm. my fucking heart sank into the bottom of my stomach, and I started sweating bullets uh-huh. because he's an old friend of mine yeah. talking about this girl like she's the sweetest thing ever dude and i saw her dude i was like dog i specifically remember a house party uh-huh. where this bitch took i'm sorry excuse that word i'm saying she's a bitch because she she was a trifling ass fucking woman <laughs> it's not a phrase i use for all women but she, yeah. this, this girl was an asshole yeah she wasn't a great person right uh-huh. she was one of those do, uh, girls that specifically hung around bad motherfuckers like yeah. bad people yeah. because she liked the way it made her feel and uh-huh. she put a lot of people in dangerous situations because of it uh, but one of those one of those you know what girls yeah. i'm talking about yeah. right her parents are fucking uh one of her dad her dad's a missionary yeah you know her mom's uh, a homonym uh-huh. you know so it, you know she didn't grow up in a bad situation she yeah. just liked being around bad people she's very devious very devious woman yeah. right she uh i specifically remember a house party where she grabbed three dudes and they ran a train on her upstairs oh. and she would do this multiple times oh. right and he don't even know shit about this girl's past. She's uh-huh. like, yo, man, like she's like the sweetest girl I ever met. She's uh-huh. a pastor. She, this motherfucker told me, and I shit you fucking not. Yeah. And I just remember this. He was like, yo, when I met her, like she like, you know, you know what I mean? Like I like the fuck, but she wanted to wait because, you know, she said like she's only had like one other sexual partner. Bro. Oh, I, don't do that. I Don't do that. He was telling me all this stuff about her, right? Yeah. And when I... I was like, oh, this woman's pretty dope. Never met her. Yeah. And I, the first time I ever met her uh-huh. was at the wedding. Oh, shit. And then my fucking, I, I remember just having cold sweats. Yeah. It's not like I was being grilled, but it's just, I felt terrible. Yeah. I was like, yo, this girl fucking lied to you. Well, yeah. So look, here's the thing. You could transition from a hoe to, you know. Oh, for yeah, sure. Yeah. But don't lie. That's what I'm saying. Don't do that. Sold them on a fucking dream. Yeah, don't fucking, don't, don't make shit up. You want to hear some funny shit too? When he introduced, he goes, yo, this is my wife, dog. Her face yeah. was like, kind of like, cause she know she knows who I am <laughs> right, because right. of the older homies. I was yeah. that geeky kid that was always around. Yeah. She knows who I am. Yeah. She avoided me throughout that whole oh, shit. Man. And so after he was like, yo, this is my wife. She was oh, hi. And she kind of like had that look and then she went to another table. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, so you know, you've been fucking lying to this guy because <laughs> she was doing the whole born again Christian thing, uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, which is cool, which is dope. Yeah, I know that's a lot. fine, but don't lie. Don't fucking don't lie. Fucking lie. You know, yeah. I mean, like, you don't have to go into graphic details, but don't fucking explicitly say, oh, I've only had one, one other, other partner. partner. You had a train ran on you. What's your definition of one other <laughs> partner? Know. Wasn't that one time where three <laughs> yeah, guys were fucking exactly. you in that room? Dog, I've, those house parties were fucking nuts. Yeah. Oh, my God. No, for sure. And so, like, again, referencing that time period. Like, a lot of you guys who are, like, I would say in your younger 20s, mid-20s, whatever, you probably have no fucking clue what we're talking about. Yeah. Like, this was a completely different period and time and, and like, what people did for fun was, was so different from what it is now. And, like, for me, I look at it now, and like I said, I, I do feel like it's soft, but at the same time, it's like, hey, I'm not trying to advocate or promote violence, you know? Like, mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that that's not the case anymore. But you know what? Like I was saying earlier, those dudes still exist. Because uh, I'll give you an example. When I was playing ball, so one of my little homies, like, he's still kind of tied up in that. It's a complicated thing, but anyway, he has youngs and stuff, right? And his homies, and they're they're serious about it. And so we we went out the ball and like it's under the I've never met his youngs or his whatever I know I know the set he's from though yeah right because it's an old set so I I mean I know it's like not dudes to be fucking around with or like you know but but like we're coming in a friendly situation like oh this is you know my big bro that I know and then these are my youngs and then we're just coming to play ball together but then like we started playing ball and then like you know some of the older youngs like like they started getting very aggressive like like shoving us and then like fucking you know like dogging us yeah. and like dude we're just trying to play some basketball like yeah. no one's trying to start shit and then so i went over to my mom i was like hey man like what's up with your young dude like why is he so aggressive you know like he's he's like trying to punk like my friends and me like Dude, we're we're just trying to play basketball. He's like, yeah. ah, you know, he just got out, so he has some anger issues, you know. And I, <laughs> it's like, why'd you tell me that shit, dude? He's, he's playing yard ball pretty yeah, much, you he's know. Playing yard ball. And I'm like, dude, come on, man. Well, nobody's trying to like do anything, or or like nobody's throwing. 
it'd be one thing if like we were trying to get physically aggressive, like throwing mm. a bow or something, right? We're just playing ball, you know? And Yo, so, people be getting mad at me when I play ball because some, I don't get aggressive because uh -huh. I don't care. Uh -huh. like, I literally could care fucking yeah. less. Like when the other opposite team, he yeah, makes yeah. a dope shot. I'm like, yo, yeah. that's just tight. And yeah. they're like, the fuck are you doing, guy? And yeah. I'm like, no, I'll tell you what the fuck. I'm, I'm getting some exercise. That's yeah, what I'm doing. I'm like, what are you talking? <laughs> yeah. We're not going for an NBA yeah, trophy, exactly. bro. I'm just saying that was a dope yeah. shot. But people yeah. are like, yo, get in the get, get, get your head in the game. No, but I know. I know because I get heated too. Like even yeah. when it's friendly, you know how it's like, run that shit back. Yeah. Run that shit back. You know, you get, you get pretty heated. Not uh, with this knee anymore. I'm nah, just, not I'm with just, that. Yeah, I'm just glad I'm allowed to touch a basketball. <laughs> yeah, you know what the the funniest thing is though is my, like uh kind of going back to like the whole thing about me telling you when I got to like you know predominantly Asian area how it was like so foreign. So before I got there, you know most of my homies that I was hanging out with were Mexican or black, right? Mm -hmm. And then uh, one time we I remember this. Uh, I went with uh, some of I went with a Mexican homie, like his little brother, and maybe some, was it just us three or one other per, a, a person? But we went to uh, this area where I later found out is like an Asian area. I didn't know. It was just like a new yeah. thing that popped up. And so we went there to like uh, watch a movie, and hang out. We went over there and then we we were hanging out, we we're sitting down. And uh, I think we were, I was like 11 at that point. And then we see like a bunch of uh, these 12, 13 year olds, right? Who are like a year or two year older than us. But then clearly, you know, they're, they're, they're like the, the beginning bangers, right? Yeah. And they're mobbing like 15, 20 heads. And then we see them and, and like, I, again, I hadn't seen something like that before. So I didn't really know what it was, right? And then they came over to our table and then um, they try to tax us right oh shit yeah and i didn't even know like i didn't even i haven't even heard it hadn't even heard it like taxing at that point whatever and then so like these dudes are coming over and it's like hey you know uh, how much money you guys got right and start off with that and then it's like all right let me get let me get like five dollars then you know the fuck not the, you, you, and yeah. you fucking fight all the fuck are you talking about right yeah. and then now mind you the the mexican homie that i'm with his older brother's they're fucking rough dudes. Yeah. Like, you, like those are dudes you do not want to fuck around with. Yeah. And then so, like, I'm used to seeing dudes who are, like, essays. Yeah. And then I started seeing these guys. That's, like, my first introduction to, like, these group of guys. And then, um, you know, they were, they were basically trying to punk us. But then, like, my homie was like, the fuck? Yeah. Right? He wasn't having it. And he, this guy was very short-tempered, too. Uh, he used to get us into trouble all the fucking yeah. time. <laughs> all the fucking time and then so he kind of got got into it with one of the dudes but then nothing really happened right and then out of the group i recognized one of the guys like it's somebody that uh i i knew um mm -hmm. i went up to him and i was like hey like we know each other man like yeah. what the fuck are you guys trying to do like like we're just we're just hanging out man yeah. right and then you're just like ah you know it's cool like forget it and then they started doing petty shit they start throwing ice at us you know throwing ice at a table and then, um, like, my homie was like, hey, fuck that shit. I'm going to call my brothers. <laughs> oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> like, nah, I don't think you got to call your brothers, man. Because yeah. I know that statement was when he felt like, all right, we're going to take it to the next level. Yeah. You know? And I'm like, nah, man, you don't got to call your brothers, man. Let's just get out of here, dude. Yeah, let's <laughs> like, go somewhere else. Yeah, let's just let's just leave, man. Like, it's, it's cool. Um, but it's so funny because that was my first introduction to like that type of community i guess in mm -hmm. that group and then i got there and then I, those are the people i was interacting with and then hanging out with eventually That's you know funny yeah um, they know they could have died <laughs> yeah dude bro every time man every time this guy would get into fucking trouble he would always do something I, now he would he, he could scrap he was a good fighter yeah. so i give him that much credit but he would always pick a fight where it's too much it's too much yeah Dude, and, being rolled up on it, it's so funny when those kind of situations happen like mm. you just brought this memory of one time when i was uh, i was walking home mm. <laughs> and so in, in uh sacramento there's a in i think in north highlands there's an area where there's just a bunch of like norteños right mm -hmm. so if you guys know what like norteños and soreños are like it's 
Sereños are like the South typical siders. South Side, like Mexican, yeah. Mexican, right? Yeah. Norteños, like Mexican American, yeah. you know. So they have their, they're actually rival, right, rival right. gangs. Yeah. So growing up, there was this one Mexican kid that I grew up with around the block that uh, he ended up being a Norteño, mm-hmm. right? But we were friends, really nice kid, mm-hmm. you know. But obviously, when your family is affiliated, you just get kind of drawn into that. Oh, stuff. for sure, for sure. I'm a freshman in high school at this mm-hmm. point, right? I don't know where he lives, but he actually moved from like the, I think he moved to North Highlands. So that's where his his uh, other relatives were. But he grew up on my same street. Mm. And I, my street's not bad. It's a you know decent street. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I was walking home one day, super late at night from my friend's house. And he lived right over there. These dudes are rolling up in a fucking car. He's like, yo, what's up? I was like, what's up, kid? You know, saying a bunch of shit. Mm-hmm. And I looked up. I was like, oh, fuck. These fools are about to fucking, they're, they're banging on me right now, right? <laughs> yeah. I look up. He goes, David, yeah. what's up, bro? Yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah. his name was like Aurelio, yeah. right? I was like, yeah. what's up, bro? And he yeah. was like, yeah. He's like, oh man, he's like, you just walking at home at night? You fucking nuts, bro? <laughs> My fucking god, yeah. man! Yeah. He was just super nice to me, and yeah. it's so funny how different we were because he was a little dweeby kid just like me. Mm-hmm. But you know, yeah, things man. change when your family. Yeah. I mean, we didn't. I didn't know what that shit was, but God was super nice to me, and he dropped me off at my house. <laughs> That shit scared the fucking shit. It was him. It was him and two other dudes. And they fucking came out the fucking window. Like, what's up? Yeah. I was yeah. like, hey, no, that's, man. That's the thing, man. It's like, you, you know, those guys, like some of them are for reals, man. Like their family, you yeah. know? And, and like you said, if you're if you're kind of growing up in that environment, it just, it's just natural to, to kind of be a part of that. You those know? are those moments too. I'm like, man, I think God got my back, dude. <laughs> Thank fucking God. But For those sure. moments are so scary because it's I just remember just walking and when they're trying to say what's up, I'm I'm ignoring them because mm-hmm. I don't I don't know what to do because mm-hmm. I'm so scared. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm I'm like 14, 15 at the time and yeah. I know what that means. Yeah. You yeah. know, so I'm like, yeah. fuck. Like I'm only maybe a couple of blocks away from my house. I'm yeah. just like, fuck. And I'm just kind of walking, just looking down, not yeah. saying anything, yeah, not yeah. saying anything. <laughs> and then when they get super close and they get loud, you gotta look up. Yeah. And thank God he knows who the fuck I am. Right. I'm like, this fool's trying to fucking jack me. Yeah. Like, that's that, that's why I'm saying. Things like that, you know? I, I'm glad that uh, kids that age don't have to really go through that stuff. For the most part, I mean, in certain neighborhoods, that shit still exists. You got you yeah. to got, you obviously um, be a little bit more mindful of your environment and like, you know, with the colors you wear and, you know, who you're around, right? But for the most part, it's not as popularized and glamorized as it was like when we were growing up. So... That's a good thing, but I just wish, you know, kids weren't so fucking soft. And, <laughs> you know, it's weird, man, going through all these like this stuff uh, down memory lane, and uh, I mean, these weren't great experiences for me. You know, it's not like I, I, I I'm just, I think I was just very fortunate, mm-hmm. and uh, sometimes like when you all this, all this like relationship that you made when you were younger just kind of panned out to help me out later on. Yeah, which yeah, no, but it's a process. Yeah. That, 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 so the reason why I say. I would do it all over again is not because like I, I'm, I'm trying to necessarily say that, oh, I, I enjoyed partaking in that or whatever, because it ultimately shaped me for who I am now. You yeah. know, those those were all learning experiences. And the important thing is, is that I learned from it. If I didn't learn from it and I just kind of stayed in the same space, that's a different story, you yeah. know, um, but- <laughs> And you know, so when we tell these stories to some of these kids, they it's almost hard for them to believe. They're like, mm. oh, how, it's like, how do you have so many stories? It's like, dog, this was like an everyday fucking occurrence. Like, I don't think you understand. I can't even remember probably 80% of the stories now because of how commonplace it was. Right, right, like, right. Only in conversation yeah. does some of this stuff start to spark up again. Yeah. I don't know whether it's because I repressed it or I buried it, but I didn't like those situations. It was very fucking uncomfortable. Yeah, because, because life doesn't need to be like yeah. that, man. <laughs> That's it, not... It's like, for, for those of you out there who don't know what it's like growing up, I mean, there's still people right now who grow up in like projects in like very hood-ass areas. They still deal with this shit. Yeah. And, but being a kid like that where I'm just like this geeky, nice kid, having to, to try to navigate my life through that was very fucking hard, man, because mm-hmm. I wasn't allowed just to be myself. Mm-hmm. That's why, once again, I had to find other people that I felt very safe with. And mm-hmm. if somebody fucked with me, these older people, my youngs would come in and they would help me out. Mm-hmm. So it was like, okay, like I can't even be myself. I couldn't, I couldn't, like you guys are so lucky watching anime and all this shit is cool. I had to keep that shit hidden. <laughs> You know, <laughs> you had to like, be low key. I had to be low key about it, and yeah. I would kind of test the waters to see if somebody else likes that shit. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, you know what that the fucking, fuck you talking about right now, Dave. <laughs> I'd be like, you know that fucking whack ass Dragon Ball shit, and yeah. the homie's like, I kind of like that. I was like, yo, me too. Fuck, <laughs> oh shit. 
you know so i would have to like test these waters i didn't yeah. join choir for the longest time because uh-huh. i didn't want to be judged by kind of the homies outside of my high school yeah because if they found out that i was in choir and shit and they would just you know make fun of me and they would use the f word on me dude that, that's the thing is that there was a certain appearance like you would have to keep because like you said you know like People would check you for it. Yeah, man. And thank God, like around like sophomore, junior and senior year of mm-hmm. high school, mm-hmm. I just, I just stopped caring. Like yeah. I was like, what, what's going to happen? These, I got to do what I want to do, mm. you know? And at the end of the day, what am I asking protection from? Like yeah. technically I don't need to be walking outside late at night. Mm. Be, and the reason why I was walking at home late at night is because I was kicking it with them. So yeah. if I wasn't kicking it with them in the first place, I wouldn't have got rolled up on. Yeah. So, you know, you just kind of start to realize like how stupid this shit is. Like I'm asking for protection because of situations that I put myself in. Mm-hmm. That's dumb. You know? <laughs> yeah. That's fucking dumb. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was like, I need protection from guys because the guys I'm hanging out with <laughs> yeah. got shit with those guys. <laughs> exactly. It's terrible. Yeah. Well, guys, that wraps up this episode of the Genius Brain Podcast. I hope you enjoyed that. There's a thousand million more stories. Yeah. About shit like there's. This. I mean, honestly, it's it, it's endless. It's endless. Yeah. I mean, there's certain things that I don't even really want to get into, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, it might like identify certain people and I, I don't want to do that. Like I, I've already, I've already proven I ain't no fucking snitch like somebody. <laughs> I, I, I snitch on some motherfucker, dude. I snitch somebody out real quick, dude. Like, yo, we're looking for this person that was murdered uh, twenty years ago. I'm like, let me tell you something. I know the date, address, and exactly where they live. They work at Intel right now. <laughs> but you know what? Snitching, stitches get stitches. That's that's why. That's not, why. I don't, that's why. I don't. Not this. Not this snitch. <laughs> All right, this snitch quick, dude. I'm out of there, dog. You don't even know. With that knee, you gonna you think you're gonna have that type of reflex? No, I, I buy an electric bicycle. I'm oh out. my Me. god! I'm out. Well, where can they find you? Uh, Instagram Ed Two E D T W O Secret Society S C R T Society dot com. Same thing for the handle for Secret Society on Instagram and Twitter. That's about it. Yeah. Well, we'll see you guys next time every Thursdays and Sundays. Remember to 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 download the the podcast. See us on iTunes, Spotify, and every single audio platform out there. Every Thursday and Sundays, you will see a new episode, and we'll see you all next time. Oh, and real quick, guys, I, I'm really curious, like from your guys, is uh, what your life is, what your thoughts are on this the type of topic yeah. we're talking about. I'm really curious about what your thoughts are. So if whatever your thoughts are, write it in the comments. If you guys have questions, also ask in the comments. I'm I'm just curious, yeah. you know? I want to know what these kids think about that type of shit. So I bet you they love it. They're just like, oh, that's so cool. And it's not cool. It was not a great time for me. It was not a great time for me at it's all. It's just story time. That's all, guys, yeah. you know? Maybe a great time for him. He was taxing people, asshole. <laughs> all right, y'all. Peace. All right, peace.